Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today, we're going to do a little bit something different. We already talked about the news about what's going on and the uh, Coinbase IPO, and hopefully it'll be great and maybe a potential ETF. But uh, what I want to talk to you today about is about goals. And it's all about everybody's different, uh, especially what is going on with every individual person. And your goals are probably different from my goals. And I want to talk to you about when, you know, we talk about these, you know, you got to have strong hands, you got to have diamond hands. But uh, do you really have to have diamond hands and hold on forever? And uh, I'm going to tell you why I think that is the most overused statement. And uh, why, because everybody is different and uh, all the different things that they have to do, that that is actually a, a wrong statement to say uh, for all time. So here's what I'm talking about. So if you've been following the channel for a length of time, you know that uh, me and my wife are into properties. We like to buy uh, you know, different houses and do short-term rentals on Airbnb. Works out real well. We love it, right? And uh, of course, there's tax benefits. And we talk about depreciation values over 20 years, and we can put in our taxes and da-da-da. And that's pretty great. But I came across this uh, tweet, and it made a lot of sense to me. And again, it's the same adage I always talk about. I always have a problem with believing that everybody's kind of like me. And they're not. There's so many different people out there. So this was from Bitcoin Maxi, <laughs> Bitcoin Maxi Hodel. And he says, I sold my last property last year. After all the fees and loan, I settled. I had $55,000. So all the properties, 55 grand. All right. Uh, all that went into Bitcoin. And this was last year. So maybe this was probably around when it was 5K. So, oh no, all my Bitcoin just under 10, 10K, right? So you've got uh, at least, you know, let's say five Bitcoin. I have friends staying saying you sold the wrong time. <laughs> Property is up 6%. Mate, that 55 cow, 55K is now 330K. No maintenance, rental stress, insurance. And I, I could go on. Uh, no, no people breaking your stuff. No different uh, discrepancies in the, uh, in, in the time frame of the actual, when they're actually going to check in and check out going uh, for all the different cleaning services, making sure that everything they did destroy that you fixed and uh, all the different criteria that goes on that. Oh, and also just, you know, doing all those taxes and things like that uh, because that's what you got to do. So when I saw this, like, you know what, for this guy or gal, I don't know, this makes total sense. You know, why not do that? Why not get rid of everything and just, you know, just bet it, write it all in Bitcoin. And that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? I mean, it does. But um, for me, these, those are not my goals. Those could be your goals, and uh, I could totally agree with you. Or maybe you're somewhere in the middle. But for me, like right now, probably not something I want to do because you never know, right? Because I always, in the back of my mind, this is how my mind operates. I always think that something's going to fail or not work out, and I have to make sure that I have a contingency plan and just go, you know, if you think it's going to be an A, you got to do B, C, D, and E, maybe an F. Because if not, things could just go down sideways and then where are you going to be, Rob? Mm -hmm. So these are the things I always think about. But again, this is this person's goal, right? So here's an example. If you're like 20 years old and you're thinking to yourself, man, I got to do all these things. I got I to gotta get rich this, uh, th this cycle. I got to get rich this bull run. I got to put everything into. No, you don't. I mean, this is not financial advice, but I'm just saying if it's me talking to 20-year-old Rob, uh, I'd be like, listen, man, you've got a lot of time to do a lot of different things. On top of that, it's not like the price of cryptos are going to be just go to the moon and then at a certain point, it just flatlines and you'll never be able to catch any other ones. So you got to do it this, this bull run. That's bull. That's, 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 that's ridiculous. So when I see something like this, I'm like, for this guy and this goal, this makes total sense, right? And then when I hear about these statements, like you got to have diamond hands, you got to have rock hands, you got to have strong hands. I always look at this and I'm thinking to myself, I remember this in 2017. I remember this in 2017. I remember this in 2018 and 2019 and 2020. And I got to tell you, I would be better served if someone would have said to me, Rob, you know what? There's these things called cycles and, uh, you know, you can hold on to it and just kind of set it and forget it and uh, you'll be okay. Or if you're really into the market, you might want to think about at some point selling some of your assets because they will go down. They will not go up forever. And if you don't sell, that's fine. You can just write them all out. You don't lose any money. 
unless you sell. So just do it that way. Or you're going to sell a little bit and get back in. You can sell 80%, 90%, 100%. It's all what you want to do. So when I hear all these statements about you got to have diamond hands, you got to have strong hands. In the back of my mind, I think to myself, again, 2017, 2018, I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Does that help you or does that help me? Because sometimes, a lot of, I think sometimes, a lot of times, for, there's two reasons. First of all, people know what the heck they're talking about. And second reason is they want you to hold so they can dump on you. And uh, that's what happens. Now, it's still solid advice, right? I'm an investor. I'm going to be here for the long haul. But I do have an exit strategy. And once I hit a certain price point, um, I am going to be 80% out of alts and 50% out of Bitcoin. Because I expect at some point a crash. And not a dip, a crash. Because right now, think about what your coin does. What does it do right now that is a real world application? And not like what they tell you it's going to do as far as speculation, what it actually does today. If you can't answer that, you now realize that your whatever coin it is, is overvalued. So it doesn't do squat. So if you're looking at things that actually do things, Bitcoin is a store of value. I think we can all agree on that. And a lot of people are behind that. There's a lot of old money, a lot of new money, a lot of smart money that's going to be building on that. So Bitcoin, gotcha, right? Ethereum, everybody's building on Ethereum. So I can see that. Will it be the, 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 the greatest of all time and forever? I have no idea. That's why I bet it, that's why I put money in Ethereum and other smart contract type platforms. Can Cardano do a lot of things? Not right now. Sure can't. Can you, do you have a lot of people building on a Cardano? No, you do not. But these are one of those things that you take a look at and go, well, maybe at some point that is a speculative asset. Binance coin is one of those coins that actually does something right now. We just did a story where you can um, actually purchase, I guess for with Binance coin, you can actually have a reduction and to certain types of stocks. Right now, they're going to start with Tesla. On top of that, you can stake it. It'll reduce your fees. They're going to have a debit card. I think a credit card too, I'm not for sure. So that actually does something. Okay. Storm X that actually does something, right? You can actually go to a store online. They have over 750 partnerships and you can buy something and get cash back. The more that you actually stake it, the more cash or sorry, crypto back that you get. And then Voyager, same type of thing. Uh, they're going to do all these things that, uh, you know, same thing, debit card, credit card, hopefully stocks. Uh, you can you can stake it, reduce the fees, the people that you actually refer. You can increase the referral fee. That actually does something. So it's not a rant, but. All these different things about people saying you've got to have diamond hands and you should never ever sell. Sometimes you got to look at it and go, yeah, I believe in the long term of this project, but on the other one, maybe it's not a good good idea to actually dump things or to actually dump things at some point. So I'm just going to tell you a little. This was I'm going to tell you a little story, and this is what I always think about. It's it's a it was a story about actually I'll get to that in a second. Amazing Stories was a was a, sh a show back in like the mid '80s, and it was uh, I think it was Steven Spielberg who was the director. It's crazy, and he did all these different stories. And one of them was starts out with a kid. This will make sense in a second. Starts out with a kid, and he's just sitting there under a tree, and all of a sudden this gnome or something like that. Again, you can, first of all, you're not gonna see a great picture because it was in the '80s. Some kind of like elf gnome thing. It's like, hey, don't sell. This was a weird thing to tell a kid. Hey, don't sell. Uh, all your different trinkets and stuff because they're going to be treasures someday. And uh, the kid's like, okay, I'll do that. And he follows this elf's advice forever, right? Which is kind of like the internet, if you think about it. You don't know who's on the other side. And it's like it's just some person who could be schizophrenic and be like, you should do this. And you're like, what? Okay. So fast forward like uh, 10, 15 years, that's Mark Hamill from Star Wars. And his parents are kicking him out of the house. Like, why are you kicking him out of the house? Like, well, you bought this stupid car and you don't want to get rid of it. You don't want to go to college. You don't want to do anything. And also you have all these stupid comic books and trinkets and, and baseball cards, which are worthless right now. So why do you even have this? He's like, oh, okay. You would think at this point, like, okay, I should probably get my, my, my S together. But uh, no, he keeps getting these visits from this stupid elf thing who tells him, just hold on, just hold on. Diamond hands, strong hands. And before you know it, it's like 40 years later, and uh, he's riding around the same piece of junk car, and he's got all the things that he ever owns in this car, right? And then it goes on, and then you see him, his house gets demolished because he was squatting, he didn't even own it. And then when he's like super old, he goes to Vegas, 
And he's got all this stuff in there. And some lady pops out and's like, hey, I, I was looking for this cup. And you know how, how this how valuable it is? It's like $10,000. He's like, oh, okay, I'll sell it to you. And then he gets an idea. He's like, maybe it's time to sell. So the moral of the story is, and then, of course, he's old as dirt, all right? But he's loaded. And in reality, this guy, this gnome thing was right. This elf was like, if you just hold on to it, it'd be you know, worth a ton of stuff, a ton of money. This is how it is in all investments, right? We know that whatever it is that you're into is probably going to be worth some money, yeah, maybe, right? But at some point, you have to think to yourself, and this is where it all comes down to do your own research. This is not financial advice. This is something that I go through on a weekly, actually daily basis going, is this really going to go anywhere? Do I need to get rid of this and cut my losses and put in something that actually works? And this is just the example of like sometimes when they talk about diamond hands, strong hands, got to hold on. Are they telling you that because they really want you to hold on? They want to dump on you. That's the real question. So again, at the very end, you know, Mark Camel's all like, hey, thanks so much. Now I'm a millionaire, but I'm like a thousand years old. And then here's the elf like, I told you. So that's what it really comes down to, right? And I will just tell you this, my portfolio, this is what I think is going to, going to do well. And I was listening to actually, uh, Alex Becker had a really great video where he talks about, uh, you know, what's like low risk, medium risk, and high risk. And he talks about different things that he's into. And it makes a lot of sense, right? So if this poor SOB, if he just would have like, you know, maybe in the 40s and 50s and 60s, maybe if he invested into some other type of like a stock or maybe real estate or maybe something else, he could have kept all that stuff and he could have made a killing later on. But guess what? It, he just hung on to one thing and that was his only hope and it just didn't work out like that. Me personally, I like to diversify. I mean, businesses, I mean, property, crypto, and even stocks. I hold Tesla. I hold Airbnb. I think it's going to be huge this year, actually. And I hold Mara. I should have gotten to riot like CJ from Market Rebellion told me, but I was like, yeah, sure. See your CJ. And I just forgot to do it. So this is my portfolio right now. It's very safe. I'm long Bitcoin. I think it's going to do really well. Ethereum and Cardano, you can see that. Uh, I don't know which one's going to you know, really break out, but I mean, in all honesty, Cardano did pretty good so far, and so did Ethereum. So I'm pretty happy. It's at two thousand bucks. Cardano's like a buck thirty. Who knows how well this video is going to age? But that's what's up. They did things to do well. Voyager dot, and then it kind of just tapers off because even though these these down here aren't worth a lot right now, I think well, it's kind of like fireworks, right? Well, this one's going to pop off first, and then maybe a little Ethereum's going to pop off second, right down the chain. Then a Cardano, then a Theta, and then Voyager, and then these down here, like Engine, for example. I don't think that's going to pop off anytime soon. So I'm diversifying across crypto. I'm diversifying across real estate. I'm diversifying across stocks. And why not? Because I don't have time to wait on one damn thing to where I'm old as dirt. Now I'm like, oh, now I'm a billionaire or a millionaire. And now I can do stuff. <laughs> My foot's in the grave. So not that's a very, like I said, a very elongated uh, story and uh you know it's it's it, it takes things to the extreme but i just wanted to share it with everybody because sometimes these diamond hands and strong hands you got to understand like what's that what's your real function behind it it's only up to you to make sure it's the best decision for you and your family and uh that's all i got so anyhow thanks for watching the video uh, if you found value in that give it a thumbs up also consider subscribing that helps a ton and that's it for today so thanks so much see you on the next one